minutes I'm going to discuss how we became involved in this project and I'll outline a few of the discoveries we've made along the way. And then I'm going to introduce several of the people that played key roles in making, giving us the information to tell this story. Well, I have a tendency to ramble a little bit and try to say, tell you everything I know about a subject. So I'm going to try to keep it at a high level and not get into too many details. And I know I'm going to keep my eye on my wife Star over there. When she starts going like this, I know I've got to get back on track. Um, discovery number one was what today is called Freedom Cemetery. And it's summer of 2015, Grinnell Hunter contacted uh, Clay County History and Arts Council and said, I need help. I've got a slave cemetery in my yard mm. that really doesn't look like a slave cemetery. Mm. And I'm afraid that when I pass, it's going to be abandoned and somebody's going to build something on it. She says, I need a way to recognize this cemetery and we need a way to recognize the poor people that are interred therein. So that got us started on the project. Um, second major <coughs> discovery was the slave owner of the property where the cemetery is. Uh, I followed some leads by uh, Tommy Jarrett, who I'll introduce later on, and through um, property searches and uh, searches of uh, Ancestry.com where we could get slave schedules. Um, we determined that the, Oma, or the owner, the original owner of that property, Samuel, Dr. Samuel Caldwell Tate from Morganton in Burke County. In 1838, after the removal of most of the Cherokee from this land, uh, the state of North Carolina held an auction in Franklin where they were selling parcels of the former Cherokee land. And Dr. Tate was the big spender at the auction. Uh, he acquired 1,304 acres of land that is <coughs> Starts about three quarters of a mile from here. If you go through town and on, onto Tusquity Road, as soon as you cross the Hiawassee River, you're in his land. And he he purchased, as I said, 1,300 or so acres that went extended from the intersection of the Hiawassee River and Tusquity Creek all the way down to close to, to the intersection of Downings Creek and back into the hills. So that was a big discovery. Uh, I'd like to mention here a little bit about what he did there. When he was, or he moved later on in 1838 to this land, he practiced as a, practiced as a physician in the area that was called Fort Hembury 
It was then in Cherokee County. And Fort Hembury is where the site was, is this way about a half a mile. Um, they farmed that property. And he, and he, oh, I'm sorry, he moved here with slaves. He had slaves in Burke County. He brought his slaves with him. Uh, and he remained here for about 19 years. In 1857, his wife passed away. So he took her and his family and moved back to his home in Burke County. And he put his land up for sale. And eventually, most of that land was bought by William Sanderson. His name is on all these streets up in the square. And uh, for those of you that are familiar with 